Blessed is our God always, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to thee, O God, glory to thee, O heavenly King, O comfort of the Spirit of truth, who art ever present and fill us all things. Treasure of good things and giver of life, come and abide in us and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O gracious Lord. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins, master pardon our iniquities. Holy God, visit and heal our infirmities for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to ages of ages. Amen. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever and to ages of ages. Amen. Come, let us worship and call down before God our King. Come, let us worship and call down before Christ our King and our God. Come, let us worship and call down before Christ Himself, our King and our God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to thy great mercy. According to the multitude of thy compassions, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my iniquity and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned and done this evil before thee. But thou mightest be justified in thy words and prevail when thou art judged. For behold, I was conceived in iniquities and in sin did my mother bear me. For behold, thou hast loved truth. The hidden and secret things of thy wisdom hast thou made manifest unto me. Thou shalt sprinkle me with hyssop, and I shall be made clean. Thou shalt wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. Thou shalt make me pure, joy and gladness. The bones that be humble, they shall rejoice. Turn thy face away from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and with thy governing spirit establish me. I shall teach transgressors thy ways, and the ungodly shall turn back unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation. My tongue shall rejoice in thy righteousness. O Lord, thou shalt open my lips, and my mouth shall declare thy praise. For if thou hast desired sacrifice, I have given it. With whole burnt offerings, thou shalt not be pleased. A sacrifice unto God is a broken spirit. A heart that is broken and humbled, God will not despise. Do good, O Lord, and thy good pleasure unto Zion. And let the walls of Jerusalem be built up. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with oblation and whole burnt offerings. Then shall they offer bullocks upon my altar. O God, be attentive unto helping me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be shamed and confounded that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to shame that desire evils against me. Let them be turned back straightway in shame that say unto me, Well done, well done. Let them be glad and rejoice in thee, all that seek after me. O God, and let them that love me, thy salvation stay continually. The Lord be magnified. But as for me, I am poor and needy. O God, come unto my aid. My helper and my deliverer art thou. O Lord, make no long tarry. O Lord, hear my prayer. Give ear unto my supplication and thy truth. Hearken unto me thy righteousness, and enter not into judgment with thy servant. For in thy sight shall no man living be justified. For the enemy hath persecuted my soul, he hath humbled my life down to the earth. He hath sat me in darkness as those that have been long dead, and my spirit within me become despondent. Within my, me my heart is troubled, I remember days of old. I meditated on all thy works. I pondered on the creation of thy hands. I stretched forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsts after thee like a waterless land. Quickly hear me, O Lord, my spirit hath fainted away. Turn not thy face away from me, lest I be like unto them that go down into the pit. Cause me to hear thy mercy in the morning, for in me have I put my hope. 
cause me to know, O Lord, the way wherein I should walk. For unto thee have I lifted up my soul. Rescue me from my, my enemies. O Lord, unto thee have I fled for refuge. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. Thy good spirit shall lead me into the land of upright, uprightness. For thy name's sake, O Lord, shalt thou quicken me. In thy righteousness shalt thou bring my soul out of affliction, and in thy mercy shalt thou utterly destroy mine enemies, and thou shalt cut off all them that afflict my soul, for I am thy servants. Glory to God in the highest and honor, peace of will among men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks unto thee for thy great glory. O Lord, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, who takest away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, O Thou who takest away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer, O Thou who sittest on the right hand of the Father, and have mercy on us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord and Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. And for day will I bless Thee, and I will praise Thy name forever. Yea, forever and ever. Lord, thou hast been our refuge in all generations. I said, Be merciful unto me. Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Lord, I have fled unto thee. Teach me to do thy will, for thou art my God. And with thee is the fountain of life, and thy life shall we see life. O continue thy loving kindness unto men that have known thee. Thou art faithful, Lord, to keep us even without sin. Blessed art thou, the Lord, God of our fathers, and, and praise and glorify thee thy name forever. Amen. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us, as we do put our hope in thee. Blessed art thou, the Lord, teach me thy statutes. Blessed art thou, the Master, make me to understand thy statutes. Blessed art thou, the Holy One, enlighten me with thy statutes. Thy mercy, O Lord, endure forever. But despise not the works of thy hands, to be even all the worship, to be even all the praise, to be even all the glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now and ever and to ages of ages. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, of one essence with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and then became man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried. And on the third day he rose again, according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It is truly neat to bless thee, O Theotokos, for the bread of the blessed and all blameless is the mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious beyond compared than the seraphim. <coughs> Without corruption, there is the power of the word, and our truly Theotokos to magnify thee. I shall open my mouth to chant, and with the Spirit shall I be filled. And Lord, shall I now pour forth unto the Mother and Queen. And I shall be seen in joyous jubilation, acclaiming exultantly all of her wondrous deeds. Most holy Theotokos, When the great archangel saw thee, O Immaculate One, Thou living book of Christ, sealed by the Spirit, he cried unto thee, Hail, vessel of gladness, through whom the curse of our first mother is loosed. Most holy Theotokos, Hail, virgin bride of God, thou uplifter of Adam and Bethnel of Hades. Hail, O all blameless one, thou palace of the only King. Hail, thou fiery throne of the Almighty. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Hail thou from whom alone did blossom the unwithering rose. Hail thou who didst bear the fragrant apple. 
Hail, Immaculate Maiden, fragrance with the King of all and salvation of the world. Both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Hail, thou treasure house of purity, through which we rose up from our fall. Hail, baby, sweet scented bloom, perfuming the faithful, thou fragrant incense and most precious myrrh. Make steadfast, O holy Theotokos, thou living and never failing spring, all them that form a company and gather for to praise thy name. And by thy grace divine, O may deem them all worthy of glory's crown. Most holy Theotokos, save us. As a clear and untilled field, Thou didst make the divine ear of grain to sprout. Hail, thou living table, and hail the bread of life. Hail, thou unfailing fountain of living water. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Hail, O mystic kind pepper, thou didst bear the spotless calf. Hail, who you lamb, who didst conceive the lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the whole world. Hail, thou fervent intercessor. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Hail, O radiant dawn, which alone does bear Christ the Son, the dwelling place of light. Hail, thou who didst dispel the darkness and reduce to naught the demons of gloom. Both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Hail, thou most worthy of all praise, divine entries and save. Seated in his holy glory on the throne of divinity, Jesus, God transcendent, cometh upon a life that has King of all, and he has saved by his pure and undefiled hand. Them that cry to him, glory, O Christ, to thy sovereign might. Most holy Theotokos, save us. In hymns of faith, all praise God, we cry unto thee. Hail, thou mountain fertile with the fullness of the Spirit. Hail, thou lamp of light and days of manna to the senses of the reverent most sweet. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Hail, immaculate lady, mercy seat of the world. Hail, thou ladder which raised all from earth to grace. Hail, thou bridge which truly leads from death to life, all who sing thy praises. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Hail, O Immaculate One, higher than the heavens, that who didst without pain carry within thee the foundation of the earth. Hail, O seashell that didst dip in thy blood the divine purple for the king of the powers of heaven. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Hail, Lady, who didst truly bear the law giver and freely slide out the transgressions of all. O unimaginable depth, O height ineffable, O maiden unwedded, through whom we are become divine. Both now and ever, and unto ages of ages, amen. With him we pray thee, O thou, who didst we for the world, the crown not woven by hands. Hail to thee, O Virgin, do we cry, fortress of all mankind, and rampart in strength and refuge divine. All creatures were sore amazed at thy divine and great glory made. O pure Virgin, who has not known wedlock, for thou didst hold in thy womb the God of all, and gavest birth to the timeless Son salvation unto all them that acclaim thy name. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Hail, O all blameless one, who did spare the way of life and save the world from the deluge of sin. Hail, bride of God, thou of great report and mighty fame. Hail, thou dwelling place of the master of creation. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Hail, O man, Stronghold and fortress of mankind, and place of hallowed glory, Bethlehem of Hades, bridal chamber full of light. Hail, joy of the angels, hail, help of those who faithfully pray unto thee. Most holy, Most holy Theotokos, save us. Hail, O Lady, fire 
fiery chariot of the world, who are living paradise, having the Lord, the tree of life in thy midst. His sweetness gives life to those who partake in faith, even though they may be subject to corruption. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Strengthened by thy might, faithfully we cry unto thee. Hail, city of the King of all, great to glory and repute. Of whom all these were clearly spoken, O Mount Montune, the depths beyond all measure. Both now and ever, and unto ages of ages, Amen. Thou spacious tabernacle of the world, hail, O Immaculate One, thou seashell which didst conquer the divine world, hail, O all wondrous one. Thou art the reconciliation of God, O Theotokos, of all who ever bless thee. On this deep, fine and most honored feast of God's all holy mother, let the love God be mine, now celebrate. Come, let us faithful now clap our hands and send up glory unto the God whom she had born. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Immaculate bridal chamber of the word, an aid to the sanctification of us all, Hail of all pure maidens, whom the prophets did proclaim. Hail thou ornament of the apostles. Most holy Theotokos, save us. From thee the dew distilled that quenched the flame of polytheism. Wherefore we cry out unto thee, O Virgin. Hail, O dewy fleece, which Gideon did foresee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Thou our heaven and our court when we voyage on the sea of tribulations and through the snares of adversity. Both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. O cause of joy, favor of us within reason to cry out unto thee. Hail thou, bush that burns, yet unconsumed, thou like those cloud which unceasingly shelter the faithful. No created thing, but only the Creator would the godly minded <coughs> adore and worship as God. But manfully trampling down threats of fire, they cried out, O supremely praised and all acclaimed, what blessed art thou, O thou Lord God of our fathers. Most holy Theotokos, Son, the true vine I did produce the ripe cluster of grapes, dripping wine to gladden the soul of those who with faith be glorify thee. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Hail, thou bride of God, who did spare the healer of mankind, the mystic staff from which blossoms the unfading flower. Hail, O sovereign lady, through whom we are filled with joy and made inheritors of life. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Son of eloquence has not power to sing thy praises, O sovereign lady. When thou wast exalted above the seraphim, when thou didst bear Christ the King, do thou now implore him to deliver from all harm those who faithfully reverence thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The ends of the earth do praise and bless thee, and cry out unto thee, Hail, pure maiden, scroll on which the finger of God did inscribe his word. Do thou now implore him, O Theotokos, to write down thy servants in the book of life. Both now and ever, and unto ages of ages, amen. We thy servants bend the knee of our hearts and implore thee. O pure maiden, incline thine ear and save us, who are engulfed in tribulation. And guard thy city, O Theotokos, from every assault of the enemy. Three guiltless youths cast in the furnace were saved by the offspring which the Theotokos bare, then in figure and in type, now in very truth and deed. And he hath gathered all the world which crieth out in chant, ye works of his, O sing the Lord's praises. And exalt him greatly for ages and all ages. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Thou didst receive 
seeing the words of envy, or pure maiden, did spare him to hear of all things. Have this nourishing with milk, who by his nod shall sustain all the universe. To him who sang all ye words, praise the Lord, and magnify him unto all ages. Most holy, pale, from barbaric attack and from all the multitude of evils which we mortals suffer for the number of our sins. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Thou hast appeared to enlighten us and be our confirmation. Wherefore we cry aloud to thee, Hail, O unsetting star, which didst introduce into the world the mighty sun. Hail, pure maiden, who didst open up past closed Eden. Hail, fiery pillar, which just leads men's nature to the life above. Most holy Theotokos, save us. Let us stand with reverence in the house of our God. And let us cry aloud, Hail, Mistress of the world, Hail, Mary, Lady of us all, Hail, Thou who art blameless among women, and beautiful, Hail, O vessel which didst receive into thyself the myrrh which was never before outpoured. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Hail, O ever virgin, thou dog who didst bring forth him who is merciful. Hail, post of all the righteous saints, and crown of those who, who strive. Hail, ornament divine of all the just, and of us the faithful, our salvation as well. Both now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Spare, O God, thine inheritance, and overlook now all our sins. For as intercessor in thy sight, O Christ, there stands before thee she that on earth conceived thee without seed, when in thy great mercy thou hast willed to be shaped in a form that was not thine own. To thee, the champion leader, do I offer thanks of victory. O Theotokos, thou who hast delivered me from 
Hail, 
transgressions, and turn me to repentance, and show me forth as a zealous doer of his commandments. And because thou art merciful, compassionate, and benevolent, be thou ever near me in this present life as an ardent help and protection, defending me from the assaults of adversaries, and leading me to salvation. And at all times of my departure, and at the time of my departure from this life, care for my miserable soul, and drive far from it the dark visions of evil demons. And in the fearful day of judgment, deliver me from eternal punishment, and present me as an inheritor of the ineffable glory of thy Son, our God. May this be my lot, O Lady, most holy Theodrophos, through thy med mediation and help, through the grace and love toward mankind of thy only begotten Son, our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ, to whom all are due glory, honor, and worship, with his unoriginate Father, and his all-holy and good and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. And grant unto us, O Master, when we depart to sleep, repose the body and soul, and protect us from the murky sleep of sin and from all the dark pleasures of the night. Calm the impulses of passions and quench the fiery darts of evil, which are craftily thrown against us. Check the turbulence of our flesh and still all earthly and material thoughts. And grant us, O God, a watchful mind, a prudent reason, a vigilant heart, a tranquil sleep, free from all the fantasies of Satan, Raise us up again in the time of prayer, strengthened in, in thy commandments, holding steadfastly within us the remembrance of thy judgments. Grant us grace to glorify thee all through the night, that we may praise and bless and glorify, glorify thine all honorable and majestic name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and the age of the ages. Amen. Amen. Most, o most glorious ever virgin and blessed Theodokos, present our prayer to thy Son, our God, and intercede with him that through thee he may save our souls. The Father is my hope, the Son is my refuge, the Holy Spirit is my protection. O Holy Trinity, glory to thee. In thee, O Mother of God, I place all my hope. Keep me under thy protection. O Holy Angel, who accomplished, who accompanied my wretched soul and lowly life, forsake me not and depart not from me because of my extravagance and wickedness. Give not access to the evil demon to rule with this his might, this mortal body of mine, but hold me by my wretched, feeble hand. Lead me in the path of salvation. Yea, O holy angel of God, guardian and protector of my wretched soul and body, forgive me all wherewith I have hitherto saddened thee all the days of my life. And though this day I have sinned, be thou my shelter this night. Keep me from all the wiles of the enemy, that I may not anger God with any sin. Intercede with the Lord for me, that he may confirm me in his fear, and show me forth as a worthy servant of his goodness. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to thee, O Christ, our God, and our hope. Glory to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and to ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Father blessed. May Christ our true God, through the intercessions of his all immaculate and all blameless Holy Mother, at the supplication of the holy, glorious, and right victorious martyrs, of our venerable and God bearing fathers of the higher martyr Ignatius, the God bearing Bishop of Antioch, patron saint and protector of this holy community, of the holy and righteous ancestors of God, Joachim and Anna, of the holy, glorious, and right victorious and of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for as much as he is good and loveth mankind. Amen. Forgive me, a sinner. God, forgive O God. Let us pray for the peace of the world. Lord, have mercy. And for the pious and orthodox Christians. Lord, have mercy. And for our Father and Metropolitan Saba, and for all our brotherhood in Christ. Lord, have mercy. And for the civil authorities of this land. Lord, have mercy. And for the welfare of our armed forces. Lord, have mercy. For our fathers and brethren absent from among us. Lord, have mercy. And for those who hate us and those who love us. Lord, have mercy. And for those who are kind to us and minister unto us. Lord, have mercy. And for those who have requested our prayers and worthy though we be. Lord, have mercy. And for the deliverance of captives. Lord, have mercy. And for the travelers by land and sea and air. Lord, have mercy. And for those who lie in sickness. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray also for the abundance of the fruits of the earth. Lord, have mercy. And for the soul of every Orthodox Christian. Lord, have mercy. Let us bless God-fearing God -fearing leaders, Orthodox bishops, the founders of this holy church, and our parents and teachers, and all our fathers and brethren gone before us, 
The Orthodox who hear and everywhere lie asleep in the Lord. And let us say also for ourselves. In the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ our God, have mercy upon us and save us. Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Christ is in our midst. Yes, I shall be. My dear brothers and sisters, in Christ, first good evening. Good evening. It's so, such a blessing to be together. On this fourth Friday, already, the fourth Friday. So next Friday, we will have the slightly longer version of the final catechism, which means all four of the Stasis. But I wanted to focus tonight on a small meditation on prayer. Since the three pillars of the fasting season are prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we've certainly said much about fasting. But we really haven't said much about prayer. And this little meditation is written by an abbot who happens to be named Paisios, not St. Paisios. He's a current abbot of one of the monasteries on Mount Athos. So, but, but yet, he writes in such a practical and straightforward way that it's, uh, it really applies to all of us very beautifully. So let me go through a little bit of this with all of you. A soul that is still moved by the charm of the material world reveals that the vain world still lives within us. This is why it is drawn toward creation and not the creator, to the clay and not to God. It is of no significance if this clay is clean and not a swamp of sin, because man is related to the Spirit of God, and through his Spirit he unites with God through prayer. So he's making the point here that when we are engrossed and engulfed in the things of the world, and when we are really preoccupied by those things, then it makes it very hard um, for us to stay close to God, because we really can't, now, by the way, Remember that he's writing to monks. So, so for all of us, there are times when we have to be engaged in the things of the world. I mean, we can't, we are not monks and nuns. But yet, the idea is to not be dominated by those cares of the world, of the material world, and to make sure that we have God with us the entire day, especially during those times that get really difficult. He goes on to say, prayer during the night is more beneficial than prayer during the day. Just as the nighttime rain is more favorable to the plants than rain during the day. Now he goes on to explain what he means by prayer at night. <coughs> Pure prayer is greatly aided by withdrawal from the worldly bustle and large crowds of people. If possible, praying alone is, is, is favorable. When one feels alone, the soul moves about comfortably. The heart erupts with reverence before God, and gradually its hard shell bursts and is removed. Thereafter, our heart is moved not only when we think of God, but also even when we hear or see his name written down. The heart weeps and kisses it with great devotion. The same happens, of course, with the name of Jesus Christ, or the most holy mother of God, the Theotokos, our soul, is then internally sweet. And I want to emphasize the saying of the name Jesus Christ, Son of God, because at the saying of his name, the devil becomes fearful. You know, remember that the devil has no power. The devil has no power. The only power he has is to tempt us. He has no power to make us sin. He has no power unless God grants him power uh, to afflict us, to bring tribulation to us. But yet we are the ones who give the devil power. But yet when he hears the name of Christ, when he hears us say the name Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner, then he becomes frightened and, and will depart after, as, I think as he says a little further down, after barking for a while, which is a good, a good way to think about it, after barking for a while. Um, studying, the, studying the Holy Fathers is a good thing but with care, for they interpret the gospel for us. It's, 
it's okay, but I know many people who become so consumed with studying the Holy Father that they forget that they're actually working on their salvation. <clears throat> so don't ever go to the place where reading the Holy Father becomes an obsession, which I've seen happen. But now he goes on to say, likewise, the examination of ourself with regard to our sinfulness and our ingratitude and the many benevolent acts of God is also very helpful. All of this naturally brings humility and then necessarily the grace of God. Spiritual study warms up the soul and moves it to prayer and struggle. The study of ourself and our sinfulness conveys humility and the need for prayer and God's mercy. Now he makes a very good point about external things, being careful about external things. He says, for this reason, before we count, before we begin to count the knots on our prayer rope, before that, and, 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 and care and worry about how many times we repeat the Jesus prayer with each knot, it is good first to count our numerous sins and the many benevolent acts of God. Now again, this is a warning to us to not be caught up in the external things. Again, I've met people who are consumed, <coughs> not consumed, but they're very worried about a hundred knot prayer rope and making sure that they are saying, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on, on me, focused on every knot and making sure that it's a hundred. Nothing wrong with being focused. But if that comes without the spirit of repentance and humility in our hearts, it's useless. We might as well be doing something else. And so we have to be very careful that the external things, you know, just like making prostrations, you know, a hundred prostrations, if that helps you become a humble person, it would, for me, it would make me tired. But if, and that could be a good thing, if you become more humble, you become tired. But we have to really, really make sure that the spirit with which we do these things is the right spirit, the spirit of humbleness and, uh, and awareness of our sinfulness. At the hour of prayer, when our mind might divert to ugly things, or if, they dis or if those ugly things descend on us unwillingly, we must not start an argumentative war with the enemy. Very important. I'm going to come back to this in a minute. For even if all the world's lawyers were to gather together, they would not be able to prevail upon even the tiniest demon through argumentation, since only with content can someone drive away the demons and their blasphemous words. Of course, the enemy will bark for a while, and then only, and then, only then run off. Man should not be upset about the blasphemies of the devil but only about the person's personal sin and to hope in God's boundless mercy. For where hope in God is absent, the devil's tail is present. <clears throat> so this is so important. When we, when we are tempted, the last thing that we should do, you know, if I'm, if I'm trying not to eat chocolate and it's sitting on the table, and I sit down at the table and I stare at it and I said, say to myself over and over, I'm not going to eat that chocolate. I'm not going to eat that chocolate. I'm not going to eat the chocolate. I'm not going to even smell the chocolate. <laughs> Certainly not going to taste the chocolate. Well, what have I done? I've made the chocolate powerful. Right? The chocolate now has power over me because I've acknowledged it and I've spoken to it. <laughs> but, so he's making the point here that when the devil tempts us, don't try to fight by arguing with the devil. And don't try to fight by saying, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. We have to distract ourselves with something completely different. Completely sing a song, um, lead a prayer, do something that just distracts ourselves from the temptation. But the worst thing to do is to give power to the temptation. Finally, when man struggles with hope, however, divine consolation comes and the soul intensely feels the caress of God's love. Then the heart is attracted by God and, the, and, is, and is treated with joy due to divine power. In the beginning, of course, one needs to have persistence and discernment until the spiritual oil is defrosted. I like that. Spiritual oil is defrosted. In order for our soul to ignite and pray unceasingly. So 
So a very beautiful little, little meditation on the power of prayer and not, and not uh, focusing on external things and certainly not giving power to temptation because that's the worst thing you can do. So, Abu, do you want to make the uh, announcement or just, I'll just continue? Go, go ahead. Okay. So we have a, a, our schedule is tomorrow, a great Vespers for the fourth Sunday of the Great Fast which is a Sunday when we commemorate St. John Thermachus, which translates St. John of the Ladder, the Ladder of Divine Ascent, of course. Um, and then Sunday, of course, our regular schedule of Orthodox at 9 and Divine Liturgy at 10. So, God bless all of you. Thank you for being together. It's a real joy. And I pray the Lord will bless us all the rest of the evening, take us safely, especially for the people with the long, long commute. Like Suzanne and Jim. Oh, <laughs> You have your traffic. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, but be safe. There's lots, there's lots of possibilities along the road. Yeah. So we'll come forward and we'll wonder if